are playing. I.O. Henderson with three fouls. Creighton Durham Hall has been sitting our best to Kelly who has three, although he is at the scorer's table now. You'll see him as we go by getting set to check back in for the Raiders. Israel Moses, that's been how they've used him anyway. From the baseline, and it goes for Israel Moses. And Creighton Durham Hall, the game tied 33-33. McDonough with the good pass that time spotting Moses and he eased it up over MacArthur. Not an easy shot with that big guy in there. McDonough is such a good ball handler. We've talked about it so many times, but he sets up so many great plays by virtue of his fine passer. Yes, and that's very critical. You look at Phillips getting the ball inside and he attracts a crowd in a hurry. That's like uh, he's the honey and there are three bees around him. It's Krieger again drawing the foul. That is his second for Creighton Durham Hall. Now there's a timeout on the floor with 5.53 to go in the third quarter. Look at this. We're all locked up again. 33 aside. It's 33-33. Minneapolis Roosevelt and Creighton Durham Hall with 5.53 to go in the third quarter. Nobody gets more than a four-point lead in this game. No, both teams have made runs, solid runs, and the other team has done a great job of putting a stop to the run and getting themselves back into the ball game. Dex Phillips couldn't go for the three-pointer. Our best of Kelly in the lineup again now for Creighton Durham Hall got the rebound. Raiders and the Teddies are tied. Here is Moses. Try to get inside on a shoddy McFarland. Contact was there. The foul is on McFarland of Roosevelt. Kelly had a great tournament so far, and his best game of the season prior to the tournament, coincidentally, was that Twin City game against Roosevelt when he had 21 points. So you understand why they have Charles, their best leaper and defender, watching him closely whenever he's in there. Power, it was five for five until that Aaron toss. Now back comes Wade Charles over the top. And as it came down, that's where the contact was, and the foul will be on. Charles, I think. I think Phillips was following Phillips. that shot. He'll get the call. Phillips, yep. But you cannot criticize the effort here by Roosevelt. And Charles was ahead of the field. Hey, it would have been easy to say he's going to make it. And they were down there, all three big guys, to pursue the play. Well, one of the things that I would have liked to have seen there, we talked about this earlier, is he would have tried to dunk that basketball, go to the hoop strong. Now, the defender knocked him a little bit off balance to disrupt his, uh, his motion in going to the basket. But that would have been a perfect time and circumstance for him to try to go strong for the basketball zone. Three-pointer drops for Matt McDonough. Creighton Durham Hall with five minutes exactly to go in the third quarter. Creighton 36, Roosevelt 33. They were having a little trouble getting anything outside. And in fact, you may have seen Josh Krieger yelling post up as the ball went along, but McDonough popped that three-pointer. Could have been camouflaged too. Now contact inside on Kree, and Krieger's going to get the foul. He's been getting some tough calls here. He's trying to play his position, move up strong, but that's his third one of the half, I think. Third for the ball game. But the thing he's trying to do too is push Charles and MacArthur just a little bit out of their shooting range because once they get the ball in the low post area uh, in the paint, they're virtually uh, impossible to stop. Third team foul on Creighton Durham Hall of this half, two on Roosevelt so far. Scramble and dragged out of the crowd by Israel Moses of Creighton Durham Hall. Raiders got him back on down. Here's Arvesta Kelly. Whoa, and it's picked clear by Wayne Charles. Showtime, three, baby. Three. Slams it in. And he hung on too long. And there's the second technical foul of the game on Roosevelt. Great steal here. Not a great ball handler. But this time, Wayne Charles took his time. Should not have hung onto the rim. He's been watching too many Air Jordan commercials. Bill Hinch is the coach of the Teddies, is really discussing it with the referee for the moment. But of course, that won't change. And that's the second time in this game the Teddies have got the tee for that reason. And Hinch is, has had it with that. McDonough, meanwhile, gets the two. Free throw tries for Creighton Durham Hall. Well, that one didn't look as bad to me as the first one, but. Well, the other thing, too, uh, he jumped so high, he almost hit his head on the backboard. Yeah. And I've noticed something about the backboards here. The NBA, uh, about seven years ago, went to a new format where they cut six inches off the backboard to 
kind of uh, complement the jumping abilities of the players now, and they don't have that here with the increased athleticism and talent of these players at the high school level. That's something that they should consider here because uh, Wayne Charles was up there in the stratosphere. He was, and you saw where his head was in that good replay, way up high. Yes, it looked like he was hanging on for show. He, he was looking down and well, just and he, seeing how far he had to fall. He also had Matt McDonough, Creighton Durham Hall, right below and behind him, and I think that was part of the Roosevelt argument. And talk and Tex Phillips was talking to the officials saying he was doing that to avoid hitting his head on the backboard. Yeah. But I don't think this decision is going to be changed as we take a look at Wayne Charles here going into flight time. Look at this. Yeah, right, ooh, right underneath. If, if he wouldn't have hung onto the backboard, he might have knocked himself out. Wow. Well, the tee assigned anyway, and the free throws dropped for McDonough. Now 4.23 to go, third quarter. They got debris to clean up. We'll take a break with Creighton Durham Hall leading Minneapolis Roosevelt 37 to 35. Take a look at that last play again, and there was a discussion between the coaches, Frank Hinches and Frank White, about that technical foul and saying that Wayne Charles was trying to avoid knocking himself out by hitting his, self, his head on the backboard because he jumped so high on that last dunk. But the call will stand, and we'll play from here. Frank White listening politely to Frank Hinches, the boss of the city, is now underneath the goes for Johnny Tower of Green Sarah Hall. The Raiders now with 403 to go in the third quarter, lead by four again, 39-35. Phillips got caught that time. He's gonna kind of sneak up and try to trap, and he lost power. Went down there for the easy one. And McDonald with another great pass. Didn't go down for Charles, and a jump ball called, and the possession will go to the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. 49 to go, third quarter. Creighton leading 39-35. It's about as big as the lead has been, and it's an important possession here for Roosevelt to try to hang real close. Four seems to be the magic number for leads here. Nothing longer than that, and that lead for not very long. Got <laughs> in and out. Underneath. <laughs> Charles, let's have a seat. Came down on our best of Kelly. Kelly doing a good job. Baking Charles into the air as you see a ferocious battle for the loose ball. That's the only situation I can I can conceive of that that leaping ability is not going to do you some good. He leaps so high and so fast. Now Wayne Charles gets it back. Three on nothing break, but trouble down there for Lawson. Now Charles no tip no. Quick hands of Roosevelt rescuing Brent that Lawson. play. Lawson by Phillips. Oh, oh body home. Carther. And didn't now know Phillips was looking for him. Frank Hinch just wants timeout on the Roosevelt bench. Timeout with 3.11 to go in the third quarter. Tough break for Roosevelt there. They looked like they were going to get a three on nothing. Charles gave it ahead to the little man, thinking he's quick to the basket, but it didn't pay off. Well, one of the things that he did is he threw the pass behind the player, and that's very tough pass to handle when you're running full speed. He might have been better off in that play just taking it himself like he did last time, but maybe in the back of his mind was thinking, if I dunk again and I looks like I'm gonna hit my hand, I might get another technical foul. Roosevelt's got their chances. Their problem has been all year long finishing off. Not a great shooting team, and I think it plays with their heads sometimes, too, and they know they're getting their chances and not being able to finish. Well, that was a great timeout by Frank Hinch at that time because he sensed the frustration in his ball club with that last play and said, look, guys, let's settle down. We've got uh, just about 12 minutes to play here. We're only four points down. Let's keep our composure. We haven't gotten here uh, by getting rattled by making mistakes like that. 3-11 to go in the third quarter. Creighton Durham Hall, 39. Minneapolis Roosevelt, 35. And the first meeting between Minneapolis and St. Paul schools for the boys' basketball championship. Bragging rights. Bragging rights on indeed. the line. You betcha. Pride you know, of the city conferences here. Of course, North was in last year in the championship game. But it didn't turn out too well. Now Creighton Durham Hall starts back. McDonough over the timeline for Josh Krieger. Here's McDonough inside, trying to dish it off and picked off by Tex Phillips. Hot rods it down and lays it up and in. Bucket will count. There's a foul and two big points. 
Tags. Or Tags Phillips. And your point about the timeout, well taken. They came with the pressure. Quick hands of Phillips. He made the steal and took it all the way down. Not much of a bump there. No, but the great thing about that play and the smart thing that Phillips did on that time, he had a big player back. Josh Krieger realized that he cannot change directions. He cuts across the grain of the defense to make that play, draw the foul. Good high percentage shot. It's a great play. Great defense that time by Phillips, too, as he prevented the penetration and then recovered and was able to intercept the ball and play the passing line. Junior Josh Krieger got the foul. It's his fourth. Free throw wouldn't drop for Tex Phillips. 39-37. Creighton with the ball and a two-point lead. 2.45 to go third quarter. Matt McDonough for Creighton. Darren Ball. Tower inside. And almost inside for Moses. Now best of Kelly Jr. Pops one. And with four, a two and a half to go in the third quarter. It's 41-37. There's a four-point lead again for the Creighton Darren Hall Raiders. Now Minneapolis Roosevelt will work it down. Ashanti McFarland, Tex Phillips in the corner for Trent Lawson. Here's McFarland for the point. Phillips. Three-pointer. Rebound by Johnny Tower. McDonough. One of the things, too, that Teddy should look to do right now with Krieger out of there is look to exploit the, the inside game. They've got a little bit of a height advantage right now. Very nice form by Matt McDonough. Straight up and down on the J with 1.49 to go in the third quarter. 43-37, six-point lead for Creighton Darren Hall. Well, that pick-and-screen offense has come up with two open jumpers. Kelly and McDonough have knocked them down to give them a big lead. Lawson, who was gunning the three-pointers last night, that one rimmed in and out. McDonough pestered by McFarland. Helped now by our best of Kelly, and here is Matt McDonough for the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. Number 41 is Nick Campbell, who came in the lineup a minute or so ago. Kelly on the wing. McDonough. We throw a line. Got it. That's two points. He had a toe slid over the line there. And it's now 45 37, an eight point lead. Widest of the game for Creighton Durham Hall, 105 to go third quarter. Marchman Matt McDonough, you cannot leave him open like that and take a chance and gamble uh, with him out there on top. He's a great shooter. Creighton Durham Hall will get the basketball with 59.8 seconds to go in the third quarter. Frank Henches of the Roosevelt Teddies has that basic expression all the time in the games that we see. <laughs> And that basically Len Horiza does too. So it's difficult to tell from their usually somber expressions how their teams are doing. Not over to this horn sound. Picked away by Tex Phillips. Off the gut. Oh, what a shot. Tex Phillips with a gym dandy. And that brings Roosevelt back to six points down. 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Man, oh man. A beauty. Here's Kelly as he turned inside. He was fouled by Roosevelt's I.O. Henderson, and now Henderson has four. Fourth team foul, so it'll be a pass in with 28.8 to go. Phillips with a great play here when they really needed a bucket. That was tough. Incredible play. He juggled the ball and pulled that one out of his socks to get that up to the basket. <laughs> wow. Dex Phillips was not to be denied on that rush. 25 seconds to go, third quarter. Six-point lead for Creighton Darrell Hall. Tamble out for the Raiders. They'll go for one in the late going, apparently. If possible, Israel Moses will drop one. They had the opportunity and had to take it. Ten good seconds to go in the quarter. A good defense that time by the Teddies, but the ball just kind of took a Raiders bounce that time. Eight-point lead for Creighton Darrell Hall. Tex Phillips for three. Got it! Big three-pointer for Tex Phillips as time expires in the third. Now it's a five-point margin. Take a look here. Phillips squares up to the basket that time as Tower rushing out at him. Good follow to an extension. Nothing but net. Very nice form for Tex Phillips. That's the end of the third quarter. Our TCF Bank scoreboard is Street Durham Hall 47, Minneapolis Roosevelt 42, and the 1991 Boys State High School basketball tournament continues in a moment. The St. Paul Civic Center on a March night in 1991.
Weather outside hasn't been too good, but it's hot as a firecracker inside as our Class AA championship game has eight minutes to go in regulation time. Creighton Durham Hall Raiders 47, the Roosevelt Teddies 42. With Billy McKinney and Jim Gilliland, this is Doug McLeod, and here we go with the fourth quarter as the Roosevelt Teddies bring it down. This is it, and the Teddies now in this fourth quarter are going to have to step up their defensive pressure. When they've been successful in this ball game is when they've gone out and they've extended their defense, applied pressure to the Raiders, and forced some turnovers and uh, gotten easy transition baskets. Tower is shadowing Phillips now. They're going to let the guards roam. Here's a shotty McFarland over the top. Charles didn't go, and the rebound to Israel Moses of Creighton Durham Hall. And Matt McDonough, number 31, their outstanding senior point guard, brings it down, pestered by I.O. Henderson as he crosses the timeline. I.O. might be saying so long pretty soon. He's got four foul four fouls. Now Kelly got it. Our best of Kelly, two-pointer. 49-42, Creighton Durham Hall by seven with seven minutes to go. The thing about this Raiders team that's hurting the Teddies as they have so many players that can score offensively outside. One guy slows down Tower, had a great first half. He was five for five. Haven't heard much from him as we look at uh, Tex Phillips here going baseline on Israel Moses and drawing a foul. Tower had a great first half. Now McDonough's had a, an exceptional second half. He's made some shots. Kelly's come off the bench and made some shots. Uh, Rosa had an excellent first half. So they've got that balance offensively that's made them such a threat and an effective ball club. Moses even has hit a couple of key shots, and he has a nice soft touch. He eased it up over the big man once and hit another jumper in the lane. They're just well-schooled and talented shooters. 18 points for Tex Phillips. 19, rather. He's one for two on that set. Last break. Back down. Tambo for Creighton. Durham Hall. Moses McDonough. 6.41 to go. In comes Israel Moses for the layup. 43, the Raiders by eight. And they're going to have to make some stops here. You can't trade baskets, and you cannot have turnovers at this point. We just saw that. That was a poor passing angle that time by Shanty McFarland, and that's uh, he rarely ever makes mistakes out there on the court. 6.21 to go. 51-43, Creighton Durham Hall. In the middle they go for Matt McDonough. Eyeball to eyeball with Wayne Charles. Creighton Durham Hall with the ball. Eight point lead, they gun it in for Moses. Broken up and retrieved by McDonough. Arvesta Kelly on the wing, now McDonough. Here's Moses. Out of bounds, and the Raiders will keep possession. And there's a break in the action with 5.48 to go in the Class AA championship game. Creighton Durham Hall, 51, and Minneapolis Roosevelt, 43. We'll be right back. Be an important sequence right here with an eight-point lead and the ball in possession of the Raiders for Roosevelt to make a stop, as you said before, Bill. They can't trade baskets and hope to get back in it. No, they're going to have to step up their defensive pressure uh, prevent them from making this a double-digit lead with under uh, six minutes to play and get down on the other end and make something happen for themselves. McDonough for Creighton, Darren Hall. Jumper didn't go that time. Picked out by Tower, McDonough, Kelly. And the left side for Johnny Tower. Three-pointer, no! And dragged down by Steve McCarthy of Roosevelt. Here comes Tex Phillips again. In and out. And flying out of the next handle for the rebound. Hall. That brings all the Raider fans roaring to their feet. Well, the Teddies have had uh, numerous fast break opportunities in the second half and haven't been able to capitalize on them. They've even missed Terrible a shot luck. Yeah. or turned it over. Now Here's Wade another. Charles picks the pocket of our best of Kelly and the Teddies come back. A shotty McFarland. Anderson. McFarland for Phillips. Three points. Doesn't go. And back comes Matt McDonough for Creighton Darren Hall. No time for the tap. Here comes Israel Moses for Kelly. 4.45 to go in the...